and through these days of penitence and through your passion time forevermore in life and death O Lord with us abide in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather together today on this fifth Sunday of Lent, and as we prepare to enter into our worship together, let us begin as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in the same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them, and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and have you rise from them. O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised it, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness and with him is plenteous redemption and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, 
if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through the Spirit dwelling in you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will never die. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother, Lazarus, who was ill. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up and quickly go out, they followed her presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, as we gather together today on this fifth Sunday of Lent, as we have been journeying through this Lenten season, this year we have been given very rich Gospels, Gospels that are, of course, particular not only for the Sundays of Lent, but for the cycle A of readings that we have been hearing. And in each of these weeks, as we have been moving through these Gospel stories, we have seen powerful images that relate to not only the creation and fall of humanity, but also the redemption of humanity. We have seen powerful miracles that Jesus has performed. And of course, we have also seen prefigurements in each of the Gospels for these past five weeks of baptismal imagery, whether that was uh, the creation and fall of man, uh, the water and the cleansing, of uh, life-giving streams, the recite of the blind man. And today, on this fifth weekend, we sort of crown 
this year's Lenten journey before we move next week into Palm Sunday of the Passion of Our Lord with what we often refer to as greatest, Jesus' greatest earthly miracle, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. And as we've just heard proclaimed this very familiar passage from St. John's Gospel, we see in it a story that conveys not only the love that Jesus had for Lazarus and his sisters Martha and Mary, but we also see how Jesus is using what is a horrible moment not only in the life of this immediate family and his good friend and the community as a means of showing and teaching and raising people's hopes, but we also see in this gospel the very important dimension of the pre-shadowing and prefiguring of eternal life and the resurrection of our bodies at the end of time and how Christ through his death and resurrection will afford each and every one of us that gift of new life. Our first reading today from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, uh, already in the Old Testament, the Jewish people believed in the end of time that there would be this resurrection of all the faithful. And Ezekiel is echoing this word of hope and this promise that the people believe in. And he says, O oh my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. You know, some of us remember when we were younger um, the story about the song about dry bones, you know, the hip bone connected to the leg bone and all of that, and we sang it. Well, interestingly, this comes from this section of the book of the prophet Ezekiel, that Ezekiel has this prophetic vision at the end of time that all of Israel, not just the individual members who have died, but Israel as an entire corporate community will rise up in this glorified manner and become an eternal and perpetual nation. And of course, we see that this prefigurement of Ezekiel is fulfilled in the promise of Jesus and in his redemption of humanity. However, there's a little different twist for us as Christians. We see that Jesus takes this to even a greater length in his promise. It is not just the raising up of a nation and their perpetual memory and history and a strong nation, but Jesus actually, through his own suffering, death, and resurrection, offers us the gift of eternal salvation that we will be celebrating at the great feast of Easter in two weeks. And so as we hear this story, this gospel passage from St. John today, Claude is filled with tremendous uh, and vibrant characters, including St. Martha and Mary, uh, Lazarus, of course, and also, as always, the apostles who are trying to figure out what Jesus is saying, what alone what he's doing. We see in all of this that this magnificent raising of Lazarus from the dead really allows all of those in the contemporary circle of Jesus that have gathered this miraculous insight into what God can do but also a great affirmation of what Jesus can do and who he is. We know also, as we look at the Passion narratives, that after this tremendous and great miracle, many uh, become even more uh, animate on putting Jesus to death because with this miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead, the hostility of the establishment begins to boil over uh, because Jesus is becoming so popular, so powerful. And yet, Jesus himself tells us clearly in the gospel today that it is not about earthly power, but about the eternal glory that God offers to us. And so as we continue our Lenten journey, and as we enter into Passion Tide this weekend, uh, we are called to imitate more intently on, uh, to meditate more intently on the passion and the suffering of our Lord. And uh, as Jesus reminds us, in the gospel today, uh, he tells Lazarus to come out. And there is a great image there where the, he tells them to unbound Lazarus because he was bound with the burial cloths. And that beautiful imagery, as the early patristic fathers would remind us, is that imagery of how sin binds us and how death binds us. And when Jesus calls for Lazarus to come out, he is unbound, he is free free from sin, free from the effects of mortality. Now we know Lazarus dies again. 
This is not the same resurrection, it's more of a resuscitation, but it is a magnificent prefigurement. And as we move into this last part of the Lenten season, it reminds us of what we are indeed through our liturgy and through our prayers and through the cycle of our devotions allowing us to meditate on, and that is indeed uh, the perfect resurrection that we celebrate at Easter. So let us uh, take the word of the Lord today, and uh, if we would like to reflect on, there are many great words and phrases that we could think of in sort of Alexio Divina today, but my own favorite is Martha's response in her profession. Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we come together today, and as we trust in the life-giving power of the Spirit, we lift up our prayers and petitions to our Father in heaven that all leaders and members of the Church may be graced with the guidance and wisdom of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may be helped by God in putting aside selfish agendas and seek justice and equality for the people under their care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are in mourning may be consoled by God in their grief and made confident in the hope of resurrection of their loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the members of our faith community may receive the mercy of God for themselves and with help offer it to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all of those who are currently suffering from this outbreak, and in a special way, not only for the sick, but for all who care for them, especially our healthcare providers and workers, our first responders, family members, and friends. May the Lord grant all of them strength, health, and peace in mind, body, and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for especially our hospitalized, our homebound, in a special way this morning, we remember Jenny Mazzoni from our parish who is critically ill. May the Lord grant all of them comfort in their time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our personal intentions, for those needs listed in our parish book of prayer, for all those we hold in the silence of our hearts and bring now today before the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased members and benefactors of St. James Parish, for all of our beloved dead, 
And for those who have died in the peace of God, may they now know the joy and fullness of life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, with humble confidence, we ask you to hear these prayers, which we make today and every day, in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as Eternal God, raised him from the tomb. Just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the hosts of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaho, Pleni Sun Celi et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. James, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, quit holy peccata mundi,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Oh, 